Hello, welcome to today's video. So you're here either because you're about to start your baby led weaning journey and you want some more information, or you have already kind of started baby led weaning and you're still kind of formulating that research on how to get started, all the information. That way you and your baby can be successful at baby led weaning. Today, I wanna to give you a follow-up. It's now been just over two years since Eric has uh, used, or since we've used baby led weaning method with our son, Eric. Uh, a lot of you, if you're subscribed to this channel, it's because you did see the baby led weaning video on how to cut foods appropriately. And then I also have, uh, as a part of that video, I do have two other uh, informational videos about baby led weaning in that three part series. So this would be video number four as a follow up two years later. So you may be asking yourself, does this baby led weaning thing really work? Is it truly beneficial? Is it gonna help my child be a little bit less picky and be open to trying new foods and more variety of foods? Well, I'm gonna answer that question. So the short answer is both yes and no. While baby led weaning and the concept of allowing your child to eat at the dinner table with you, to eat what you're eating and not be served something completely separate or different from what you and your family are eating at the dinner table, baby led weaning is the idea that you're able to give your baby the same food that you are eating and as long as you're cutting that food appropriately, you shouldn't really have to worry about your baby choking and understanding the differences between the gagging and the choking in your baby is extremely important. And before we kind of dive into uh, what I've learned and how our journey went, I do want to make note, obviously, that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, so all of the feedback and suggestions and advice and information in this video is just solely based on my experience with my one child that I did help with baby led weaning. And just real quick, I do have to plug here. Be sure if you wanna follow some more information about children's gardens um, or just gardening in general, uh, please follow my Instagram. It's at Patricia Diane videos. You can follow me there. If you're local in the Arizona area and are kind of a new beginner gardener, I also have a group that is a support group just for beginner gardeners. And it's just beginner gardens in Arizona. So I'd love to have you there and don't forget to subscribe and like the video if this is helpful and we'll get right into it. So the first part of the yes part is baby led weaning is what you make it. Now I want you to think about your relationship with food and I know that you have some sort of food that you tried when you were little and you just never have liked that food. For me it was eggplant. Okay, so I never liked eggplant. I tried it once, it was disgusting. I didn't like the flavor of it. I didn't like the texture. I just don't like eggplant. Now that I'm into gardening and I found a variety that I do like, I was open to trying it again, but it was a food that I didn't like and I had to make the choice that I wanted to try it again and this was the way that I was going to reintroduce eggplant into my eating. So that part of my relationship with a food that I didn't like, that I haven't liked my entire life, was based on the idea that it was something that I wanted to change, that I wanted to in introduce back into my diet because of health benefits, and I made that change for myself. Now if you were to come tell me, hey, I have some eggplant, do you want to eat it? Nope. Not doing it. I don't like eggplant. Okay, but have you tried it in this recipe? I don't care. I don't like eggplant. So that idea and that mentality we all battle with, we all fight with, and we all have foods that we just generally don't like. Your baby is going to be in that same situation, whether it be because of taste, whether it be because of texture, maybe it's something that they, you know, you did introduce this food and they, you know, weren't feeling well that day or you were having dinner and a loud noise, you know, happened while they were eating this food, and maybe your baby has, maybe your baby, maybe your baby <laughs> has 
a, a negative uh, relationship with this one food or it could be even a high chair. There's so many different factors when it comes to food and eating um, and that we don't always think of uh, and sometimes we do have to think outside of the box. So really all that to be said is that Yes, baby led weaning did work for my baby in the sense that he is very open to a bunch of variety of foods. He has no real fear of food, um, but he does still have foods that he doesn't like. For example, he does not like mashed potatoes. He does not like sweet potatoes. He does not like anything with the texture of that mushy potatoey texture. Okay, so you're as you may be asking or may think be thinking to yourself here is that well what if we're having a baked potato and you said in your previous video that I shouldn't be cooking him something completely different for dinner if we're just having a baked potato well you this is up to you your baby's journey with food and how you want to introduce food to your baby how you want to I guess how you want to handle food with your baby, with your child, with your children is completely up to you. And I'm not here to tell you that this is how you're supposed to do it because everybody is different and everybody, you know, updates their philosophies and has different, you know, viewpoints of food. But in my experience or in my belief, I guess, um, is that I'm not going to serve a baked potato to my son, even now at age almost three because I know that he doesn't like potatoes. So I'm not gonna give him just a baked potato with everything mixed into the potato because I know he doesn't like it. Now, if he had eaten a baked potato at some point and he absolutely loved it, and then all of a sudden a month later we were having a baked potato or a sweet potato, and all of a sudden he didn't want it or he didn't like it, he would say, I would know that he likes it he just doesn't want to eat that at the time so I could make a decision of if I wanted to fight it at that time and say you know what you like baked potatoes or you like XYZ food I know you like it because the last time we ate it you said it was so yummy so why don't we try it or this is what we're having for dinner so I know that you like it so here's dinner but in this case I would know that he wouldn't like that and I encourage you that when you are having meals to have a variety of food. So if you're having just a baked potato with butter and you know that, you know, or a sweet potato and you know that your child doesn't like that, but that is solely what you're having for dinner. Let's just say it's just a, you know, a lazy night and you're just having a baked potato, like totally fine. So in that case, I would serve my son something different because I know that he wouldn't like a baked potato. So at that point, I would give him, you know, a Greek yogurt or something that would have some sort of substance to it and that he could not, you know, have to eat that potato. But when we have baked potatoes, usually you have bacon, you have cheese, you have broccoli, you have some toppings on that. Or if we're having a sweet potato, usually we do have other foods with it. So I would feel super comfortable with giving Eric a little bit of the baked potato because I keep I want to keep offering. You want to keep offering a food even if your child doesn't like it, then you still want to keep encouraging and and providing that food for them in case they do want to try it again. Eric has tried potatoes and sweet potatoes over and over and over again and he gags every time. He just does not like it but he's not afraid to try it. And I'm not afraid to offer that to him, even though I know he doesn't like it because I wanna keep him in the mindset of, I know I don't like it, but maybe I'll try it again and just see. So, and I'm not telling him that, he's deciding that for himself. The other part of it is, it is what you make it, is if you're sitting there and the whole time you're just like, is it okay? Are you okay? Oh. Oh, don't eat that. No, that's okay. Or if you, you know, if you've cut foods, but you're still really scared about it and you're just like with your baby, like just watching them and is it okay? And watching it, you know, watching them chew it and you're afraid, like your baby is going to be like, I don't like, am I supposed to be afraid of something? Is this supposed to be scary? So I really want you to go into baby led weaning and feel very confident in what you're doing and feel very conscious and cautious 
and know those differences between again the choking and the gagging that we talked about in the previous videos because you what however you're feeling and that sense of confidence or sense of anxiety you're going to pass that on to your baby as they're eating their food so i want you to feel confident i want you to not just watch my videos but watch as many baby led weaning videos as you can so that you feel confident that you're ready to begin babies follow your example remember that when you're having a dinner and let's just say that we're having something new that I know Eric has never tried before. Well, if I'm again kind of sitting there like waiting like, you know, and like always asking him, hey, why don't you try that? That's new. This is a brand new food. We've never tried this before. Why don't you try that? Hey, I think you're really going to like this. Maybe you should try it that's gonna kind of i mean maybe not all babies but i know if i did that to eric and if someone did that to me you're gonna make me not want to try that because you're bringing a lot of attention to that food so again keep you know just be relaxed and you can say hey this is a new food we haven't tried this before this is called an eggplant i went out and we grew that do you remember seeing the purple plant the purple eggplant from the garden this is what that is. I cooked it and now it's on our plate and that's what we're having for dinner tonight. Having an explanation like that, just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your toddler, even if your baby is six to seven months old, get into the habit of just having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Remember, your baby is a person. Your baby is not just, um, you know, a little like, want to I don't want to say anything rude but like your baby is not just your little puppet for you to play with right so your baby is a person your baby has their own likes their own dislikes their own feelings their own thoughts their own opinions so why not talk with your baby as if they're an actual like kid or adult my three-year-old almost three-year-old I don't you know it's okay baby you know let's try a new food like hey we went out we remembered the purple thing that we picked in the garden that's an eggplant I cooked it and that's what we're having for dinner so if you want to try it or well I wouldn't say I wouldn't say if you want to try it but I would say I think it's really good I was surprised I used to not like eggplant but now I like it like sharing those experiences, just talking with your child, like that is gonna help them have a positive relationship with food rather than just being fearful of it. That pretty much sums up everything. I didn't go in particular order really with my notes and kind of how I had everything. I'm sorry, it kind of ended up being rambled uh, and jumbled up here, but I definitely do want to say that baby led weaning, without a doubt in my mind, was the best route to go. Now, we never tried baby food with Eric. We did use those little pouch things when we were kind of out and about, like if we were, gosh, it seems so distant now, but like if we were out walking um, around the mall or we were at a park, just for convenience, I, I would usually have like two or three like little granola bars or those little pouches out with us. And that was the only real baby food that he had. But otherwise, he has always like I'll insert some pictures here if, for example Eric loves Brussels sprouts if you ask him what is your favorite food he would say broccoli he loves broccoli I ask him all the time what do you want for dinner and he'll always say okra and rice like I don't know what that kid loves so much about okra and rice but he, and I don't know why that combination because we don't normally have okra and rice together but he loves white rice and he loves okra. Just the other day, I'll put a picture here as well. Just the other day, because I'm growing um, okra out in our garden, we I picked a little pod of young okra and he ate the whole thing raw and it was super delicious, like even I loved it. And so it's, again, it's all about that approach. Hey, this is okra. Do you remember how we have this and how you love okra when we cook it? This is okra as it's growing. And I took a bite and I would say, wow, this is really yummy. Do you want to try? And he was all up for it because I was saying how yummy it was. And that's the other thing too about creating that positive relationship with food with your baby or your child is you know, maybe, uh, so maybe you have like a five-year-old and your five-year-old isn't really into food, like, like different types of food and variety. Well, you can still like go about it in different tactics. 
this this channel has now moved to more of a garden um, direction and what i would really like to do is kind of move my specialty into children's gardens sensory gardens and just really get children excited about gardening i have kind of a long history with that um, being in the ffa and um, do, doing different projects with my daycare center that i used to work with and my high school greenhouse but anyways um, you know, that's kind of what this channel's moved into. I just encourage you that if you have an older child at this point and somehow you stumbled upon this video, maybe you're doing baby lead weaning with a younger baby that you have um, now and then you do maybe have some older children at home too that are quite picky with food. Maybe start a little vegetable garden in your backyard. That's something that I'm trying to transition to um, is to help people start these gardens for children, growing carrots, growing peas. I mean, I have neighborhood kids that come out to my front yard garden and they just, I plant the plants for them. They come out, they pick carrots, they eat all the peas off the vines. I mean, these kids, we're talking like anywhere from ages, well, my son is usually the youngest, so from two years old to like teenagers, they're out there just picking all of these peas and just munching away on all of these vegetables and they love it they absolutely love it so i think it's just a great way to reintroduce fruits and vegetables in a healthy setting especially now that we have a lot of homeschooling going on uh, if you're in the area of phoenix arizona i'm uh, kind of transitioning myself into a garden coach and i'd love to help you get a child's uh, your child's garden um, set up for growing vegetables i hope to start working with schools and churches and um, just a bunch of different communities that don't have these gardens uh, available and I'd really love to help push into that. So adding to that in a nutshell concept, I do really promote baby led weaning. I feel like it was the right step to go. I feel like it creates a positive relationship as long as you're feeling positive, as long as you are feeling confident, as long as you have the tools and confidence that you need to help your baby have a positive relationship with food. I 100% feel like it was just the best route that we could have gone. Um, it was cheaper. It was easier, it was so much fun, and you know, again, Eric is eating all kinds of fruits and vegetables that I know some kids don't, like they wouldn't even dream about eating. And you guys, thank you again so much. Uh, my most popular video is the baby led weaning, how to cut foods appropriate video. So I really appreciate all the views and comments and support, and I've gotten so many positive comments and just great, just positive feedback on that video so i'm so happy i was able to help you i'm so happy that I was able to help you you know gain that confidence that you need and two years later this is what we have we have you know a little boy who has a very positive relationship with food who has his dislikes and his likes and um you know we don't have to dinner is not a struggle for us so I want you to have that with your baby. And you know, just again, remember that every, every baby is a little bit different. So if we were to have another child, you know, maybe baby led weaning wouldn't work for, um, you know, that, that baby. So you just have to kind of, you know, stay flexible and um, just take every kid separate. You know, everybody's a little bit different. So, but I'm so glad that you're here and thank you for subscribing and being here and please update me on your baby led weaning journey. If it's helped you, are you just getting started? Are you, you know, nervous and you want to get started, but you don't really know how? Leave some questions, leave some comments, and I'm definitely uh, here to support you. So we'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.